Hello guys, in this video we're going to talk about uh, the perfect technique for clustering which is called K-median clustering and with K-median we're going to use a different type of distance measure and this distance measure is called the similarity distance or it's based on the Hamming distance and basically the Hamming distance is, is used most, uh, most of the time or, or mostly popular in text mining. Uh, basically what happens is that if you have uh, two uh, pieces of writing and you would like to find out how consistent or the match between them, so you have different words, uh, terms appears in both of them and based on the match and the mismatch, actually the focus is on the mismatch the count of the mismatch, then you will find out how relative this document is to the other. So this is the first use, the, the early use, the, the historically, the early use of uh, the Hamming distance. So this is what we call it a Hamming distance. Hamming distance is you have two vectors. Uh, you all know that all, these, all the text, uh, the computer doesn't read the text that we're reading. They're reading 1010. Zero, one, zero. So all this text that we 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 can read, the computer read it as a vector of of uh, of binary vector of one on zeros. So a bunch of one and zeros. So this is a is a word and b is another word. So it has a different vector. So what happens is with the Hamming distance, we're just counting the mismatch. This is zero one. This is one zero. There is a mismatch. What zero zero and zero zero one 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 are actually matches. Do you think that this is something could be appealing to our problem? What is our problem here? Our problem is here. We have all zeros and ones, and it would be awesome if we can present this as a bunch of zeros and ones, binary vector, and the distance that we could use between all these two vectors. Uh, the, vector, the, the, the vectors corresponding to the client and, uh, and the vectors corresponding to the centroids of each cluster, if we can have them in terms of ones and zeros, both of them, and we use the Hamming distance to do so, then we will be able to uh, also measure the distance between the different vectors and find the minimum distance accordingly and hopefully be able to see clearly which offers belong to which clusters, not like how we see it here. All right, so this is our human problem. We're going to translate this by the use of mathematics. There was a human problem was basically we are too lazy. It's not only too lazy. Look, guys, I also showed you uh, here um, this kind of visual and this kind of visual, how to extract the different offers, and also showed you how you can do it very precisely using the pivot table, but we still, it's a lot of work, unnecessary work. Why can't I just have a one and zero? And this is, as a scientist, you as a researcher, as a scientist, that would have been your question at that time. And this is why they were saying, you know what? We need to find a solution. And then they studied other areas, and one of the areas was in computer science at that time, had to do with the uh, distance measurement between text and it, actually it works why not use this kind of distance to your uh, just interest and for fun i'm just showing you a different kind of uh, distances so here's the euclidean distance this is what we call it a cosine distance and this is the hamming distance this is the Manhattan distance. And why is it called Manhattan? Manhattan is, is uh, an area, a, a county in New York City. And it is very upscale at a certain time. It was built in Uli. And you know when you build every, any, any county or any city or a suburban city in, New, in, a, in, in, in an area, everything is organized, meaning all the it's like a grid like this like this is my house this is your house this is my house this is your, his house her house and so forth and these are the streets very nicely so whenever you want to uh, or there's a couple of, of houses in this block so it is basically uh, uh, very organized in blocks like that so this is why it's called the Manhattan distance really this is the reason really uh, and this is here, uh, uh, Minkweski uh, distance, it's like more curvy, 
as you can see, it's four waves, mostly used in physics. In the physics, uh, this is the uh, Chibishov. Chibishov is I love this name. I call my little son Chibichov sometimes. <laughs> it's just uh, very lovely. So a uh, Chibichov is actually a an, 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 uh, a Russian mathematician. So he only takes the horizontal distance. He doesn't care about uh, Euclidean here or the whole distance like a Manhattan, just takes the horizontal uh, Chibichov distance. And then you have the Jacquard distance. Uh, this is Jacquard distance, guys. Uh, we also uh, look into it. Actually, I'm not going to go deep into that. I don't know. You're not going to understand. Uh, but, um, oh man, I hope that you would understand. But uh, this kind of distances, it's very important for a person like me to know this record distance. One of the things is how, and you can see this is a Venn diagram, so how close they are or how far they are to so maximize or minimize the overlap or maximize the overlap. And uh, this is really uh, very important and uh, especially if you are talking about um, um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna waste you. I, I know that you're not gonna understand. It has to do something with structural equation modeling. It has to do when you are defining a latent variable. A latent variable is a variable that you cannot measure, like your happiness. Uh, I measure your happiness by um, not your happiness. Maybe your uh, let's say your engagement on Facebook. I cannot measure your engagement on Facebook until I ask you how how about the your um, uh, uh, intention to like a post, to comment on a post. So it manifests itself. It manifests itself through a like, um, uh, a comment, uh, uh, a share, and so on. So when you're having uh, a certain definition of a latent, a latent variable could be either formative or could be reflective. So, meaning it could be a formative, a reflective in such a way that, as I mentioned earlier, engagement is actually uh, uh, defined by different other measures. So, we are hoping to maximize this overlap, so this formative. When it is more uh, reflective, sorry, when it is formative, for example, we're talking about uh, risk affecting trust, and thus trust found to be affecting the intention to purchase. This is one affecting the other, affecting the other. <coughs> <coughs> so we try to <coughs> minimize the overlap. So what I'm trying to tell you here is that for each one of these distances, there is an application. Over here, I'm not going to lie to you. I need to look into this. I am not aware of the hammer sign distance, but I can see something has to do with the, with the Earth, <laughs> with stars, planets, something quite sophisticated like that. But who knows? Maybe if I learn more about it, I could find a way to in, 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 improve a certain business uh, um, uh, uh, technique using it. Who knows? And then the Sorensen dies. And distance, something similar to this, but for a different kind of uh, application. So this is the distance measure that we took earlier. It's Euclidean distance, but the Manhattan distance is different. Uh, a Manhattan distance takes all these all together. So now we're going to talk about our distance is something has to do with the cosine. This distance here, the... Uh, Hamming distance could be translated into a cosine uh, distance. So this is the cosine similarity, we call it. Mathematically, there's a, a bunch of mathematics behind it, but if you have one vector for uh, 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 purchase one and one vector for purchase two, meaning one vector for a client, one vector for the centroid. So there is a certain degree. This so cosine is equal to this, mathematically found to be equal to this. So the cosine, uh, this we call it a cosine similarity. Remember, the Hamming distance is about this similarity. So the cosine is about the similarity. One minus the similarity gives me the Hamming distance, which is the this similarity. Okay, so this is the similarity, the cosine theta, and one minus this cosine theta 
gives me what we call it the distance metric, the cosine distance or the Hamming distance, which is the, uh, as in, in, in probability and statistics, uh, probability of x, probability of y, uh, sum them together equal 1. 1 minus either one of them equal the probability of the other party. So this is what we are trying to do. And to do this, we are going to use this kind of, uh, this kind of, uh, 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 Excel formula. So here is the formula in mathematics. Remember that the formula in math mathematics is 1 minus this cosine distance. So 1 minus, minus what? The summation of the multiplication, the product. So the sum product of A and B. So the sum product of all the M2 to M33 h2 to h33 we're going to talk about this in a bit this is uh, the first m is the first client and h is the vector so it is the centroid over the square root square root of the sum of the client m as you can see times the square root of the sum of the of the as you can see the, uh, 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 this is the centroid, this is the vector, let's say, of the client. So if over here, for example, we have any error uh, undefined, then we are going to, uh, meaning if 1 minus, if this is all equal to 1, it's a match, 1 minus 1, uh, then it will equal to uh, 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 0. But if we have here, this is equal to 0, then it will be uh, returned as 1 minus 0 equal to 1. So that's why we have 1. Okay, in any case, in the next video, I'll show you how to use this on uh, Excel.